Um, I'll show you just a couple of visuals to go with that and point out just a couple of things. Now, a lot of the pictures I put up here are going to be some of the best pictures ever to play the game, but they all do some of the right things mechanically. Um, first of all, just a couple of things with the grip. I wanted to put it big so you could see it. You have generally two basic fastball grips. You have the four seam grip and the two seam grip. When kids are first learning how to pitch, I think that they should pretty much always be using the four seam grip because it helps them have a little more control. And if kids are have, have small hands and they're just learning, there's nothing wrong with putting three fingers on the baseball when they first learn. They have to be able to control the baseball more than anything. The four seam grip as kids get older is really geared more toward high fastballs or 3-0 fastballs that you just want to go straight into the plate. Once they switch and they start throwing with the two seam grip, now they're gonna get a little more movement. So once kids can control the baseball and they can throw the ball through the middle of their catcher's body at will, and they get a little older, now we're getting into the Connie Mack age levels and above, it's good to start teaching them the two seam grip because eventually they're gonna to start to move their fingers around the seams and get more movement in different pressure points, and that's gonna allow them to do that. Plus, you're gonna get a lot more natural movement, you're gonna get a little bit more sink, and a two, that two seam fastball is gonna become a lot tougher to hit. This is the same position I wish did that Nate was just showing us. Here you have a pitcher who is nice and tall on his back leg. You wanna to look to make sure the pitcher's back legs are tall and they don't have a bend in their knee. If a kid is four foot six and he stands tall, when he goes to break his hands, he's gonna throw from about five foot six. But if that kid is four foot six and he bends down like this in his balance position, now when he goes to throw, he's only gonna throw from a little less than four foot six. And eventually we want that ball to come downhill and that's why it's very important for us to stay tall in the balance position, okay? You'll notice where the glove is and where his hands are positioned just like Nate had it. He's showing that butt cheek to the hitter, getting a little coil with his hips, and he's got that good high kick. Here's Cole Hamels, same thing. Tall in the back leg, nice and compact, chin over the chest, and hands in that same, please God, help me throw a strike position. And you'll also notice that his eyes are on the prize. It's important for kids to keep their eyes and keep their head directed in the direction of that catcher until they go and they actually release the ball, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you a quick little video in a second. It's gonna be a little throwback. It's gonna be a classic, but it does all, this, all these things right. Tell pitchers when they're coming to their balance position, let their legs do the work. A lot of kids, when they come up to their balance position, what they wanna do is they wanna throw their shoulders back. Just tell them it's very simple. They take this part of their leg, their knee to their hip, and they just, boom, kick it up. The rest of their body, waist and up, should just stay nice and relaxed. Let the leg do the work. We also wanna make sure that the kick is not just a kick. It's not just, hey, let's lift the leg for the sake of lifting the leg. It's also for the sake of getting that weight onto our back half. There is no pause at the top of the balance position, but there is a transfer of weight. So when, it, when a pitcher's nice and fluid, he's coming back to explode forward. All right, and it's important that we teach kids that when they come up to that kick, it's not just balance, it's also weight transfer. Here's a very phenomenal pitcher and a classic, classic delivery. Now, I'm gonna put every penny I have that says there's not one coach in this room that has a Nolan Ryan on their team right now. My, the odds are heavily in my favor, okay? I might be wrong, but they're in my favor. But I want you to watch Nolan Ryan's delivery because he gets everything he has out of his body. That trademark high leg kick, it's a really high leg kick, but it's also where his weight transfers. And watch his hand on his release. It's all the way over his front shin. That's called finishing the pitch. Down, out, explosive and finish. You notice his glove comes to his front side, but what I really want you to see here is how that weight transfers back on his balance position. When he kicks that leg, he's storing it up and then he's exploding toward home plate. I could just, it's sad because this is what my life has come to with baseball, but I could just sit here and watch that all day. All right, and there he is from the classic view, same thing. All right, momentum, consistency, fluidity. It's tough for kids at a young age to be fluid because they're just learning, but that's what we're going for. So as you're teaching them these mechanics, please make sure that they're comfortable. A kid has to be comfortable, and I think that's the most important key to being able to throw strikes is to have a comfortable delivery. Um, in this position right here, in this picture right here, okay, 
This is that the position we were just showing where the leg comes down at the same time that the hands break. You notice that the, pitcher's, that the pitcher has, the, he's on top of the ball and he has the baseball right back by his back hip while his front leg is coming down. He's coming down before he goes forward and his chin is still over his chest. Here's Greg Maddox with the arm swing. You'll notice how his hand is coming up on top of the baseball. So when he finishes breaking his hands, he's on top of the ball, not back here and underneath it. Most common mistake kids make when they throw is they want to get underneath and push the ball instead of getting on top and then letting their wrist and their hand do the work. And the same thing here in a little bit later position when you're in that power tee and the arm comes all the way up. This is the power position that we just showed you. You notice that his body forms a T. The front glove is coming in for the tuck. The back hand is up on top of the ball. And also notice the front knee as he comes toward the plate. The front knee is going to bend. It's going to let the body come forward and finish over the front side as opposed to landing straight and then not being able to finish. Also a common mistake that young pitchers make. There's the arm slot up above the shoulder. There's the release point out in front. Glove tucked on the front side. Also out in front again from the lefty. Glove tucked on the front side. And then there's that compact balance finish. But the pitcher that I love most to watch and used to demonstrate the finish is Cole Hamels, okay? Again, that's just him finishing, bringing the leg up, and then letting it come down. He's not bringing the leg around, he's exploding with the hips, and then the leg is coming down and following, he's finishing the pitch. What we don't want to tell kids is follow through, okay? Because follow through doesn't really mean anything, but finishing your pitch or locking in that seatbelt or popping the hips, that's a command that they can understand. It's something that's more direct, and I think sometimes it's just the way we tell the kids things, the way we package things, that helps them to understand, okay? Just a couple reminders. Tell the pitchers to throw through their catcher, not to the catcher. That helps them cut loose. Impress upon them the importance of simply throwing the ball through the middle of the catcher's body. It's a big target. Hit that catcher's body every time you throw. And then also, when they throw, tell them, rip off the catcher's mask. That helps them get their arm out in front, helps them finish the pitch, rip off that mask, and pop that arm all the way through. And this is what a nice, smooth, explosive delivery looks like beginning to end. And then this immensely tall, giraffe-like Jared Weaver, I believe it is, even at that height, when he comes through his delivery, when the front foot hits, the back arm is up, the glove tucks, the hips rotate, and even at that height, his arm comes all the way over his front shin, and he locks in that seatbelt at the end of his delivery. That, too, I could watch all day long. And there's the target in the middle of the catcher's body.